Mental health is a subject that isn't actually touched on as much as you would think. Now I know what you're thinking, Leah, YouTubers talk about mental health all the time. It's constantly on the timeline, it's on TikTok, it's everywhere and awareness is something that a lot of people encourage. And whilst you might be right that they might talk about it in passing in a video or a tweet or even talk about it in depth on a live or even orchestrate an upload to either raise awareness or for attention, people don't actually go into as much detail as you think they would. And by detail, I mean it's very rare that anyone actually goes into the specifics of the things that they're experiencing when it comes to mental health. And to be honest, why would they? It's their private life and sometimes things like this are kept private for a various amount of reason. Now I am all for talking about your mental health online if that is what you choose to do. I'm all for also making jokes about your experience. That is the branch of dark humour that I actually quite enjoy. The act of talking about your trauma or your problems in a light-hearted way to make discussion easier to have. And to be honest, it's something that I do quite a lot of on my social media, along with self-deprecating jokes and pathetically bad puns. Please follow my Twitter, sometimes I do do the haha -ha funny. And with my own sense of humour being tuned to that kind of thing at the moment, so has my TikTok for you page. Another TikTok video. And although there are some gems, whether they be humorous or genuinely really helpful tips when it comes to mental health, and although I might make my own hashtag relatable, hashtag mental health, hashtag depression, TikToks. There are some TikToks and some trends when it comes to mental health that just don't sit right with me. Now, like I said, I don't specifically have that big of a problem with people talking about their mental health online, especially if they're trying to raise awareness or they're trying to use their own experiences as a punchline. And to be honest, we all have a right to talk about the things that we experience as a way of expression. But when does that go too far and become romanticization and glamorization of very serious issues? Well, it went too far on my For You page. Now, yes, because changing your TikTok lights, your neon TikTok lights, to emphasize different symptoms of BPD, that means you've got BPD. Green, envy, blue, sadness, red, anger. The problem that I have with TikToks like these is they tend to show mental illness as an overdramatization of what it actually is. Uh, mental health is not a personality trait, nor is it a character in a fictional book that has all of these symptoms. And they often present mental health as caricatures. Now, usually a caricature is like a sketch of a person that emphasizes some features whilst under-exaggerating others to make the person in question look significantly worse than they are. But in literature, a caricature can be a character with over exaggerated traits. However, in real life, people are a lot more complex than a certain few features that are exaggerated in writing. And the same can be said about mental health. Mental health is a lot more than the few symptoms that you might see. Although some of these things might genuinely be symptoms of things like BPD or bipolar disorder, which are not interchangeable, they are just the ones that I see constantly used in this format. To portray these symptoms in certain such an aggressive, overdramatic light can be quite damaging and also glamorizing. And I understand creativity. I understand people wanting to be creative and make content, maybe out of something that they do indeed suffer with, maybe the intentions are good. However, I just it just doesn't sit that well with me. By overdramatizing mental health in this way, you end up consequently underplaying the other symptoms that people might experience as a result of having these mental health issues. When you set up all the boxes that someone must tick to have a mental health disorder, you might invalidate those that might only have the more minor and less recognizable symptoms. A common thing that I've been seeing a lot online recently is the act of gatekeeping, the idea that you cannot talk about mental health 
yourself unless you have a strict diagnosis and self-diagnosis is wrong. Yes, to an extent, you shouldn't just rely on self-diagnosis. However, a lot of the time when it comes to pushing for a diagnosis, there must be some diagnosis done for yourself first. For example, a lot of the time, the first step to diagnosis is typing your symptoms in online and narrowing down what you could have. Now, I don't know what it's like in the rest of the world, but I know in the UK, from my own experience, pushing for a mental health diagnosis can be very, very hard. Simply because of the underfunding when it comes to mental health, there's still considerable stigma around it, and generally the waiting times on the NHS, especially now during a global pandemic. And to be honest, the same can be said about other health issues as well. And an example of this is, well, COVID. There are symptoms that you're told to look out for. And a trend that I see a lot in these TikToks is this is not this mental health problem. Being clean and tidy and liking things in order isn't OCD. Getting nervous about a presentation or an exam doesn't mean you have anxiety disorder. It is normal to be anxious and stressed. Just because you are having a few bad days does not mean you are depressed. Crying isn't a mental breakdown. And I'm partly in between on this. At the same time, I don't think just because you've had a sad day, you have depression. But at the same time, I do think that you can have days where you do experience depression with a small D. But I don't think these over dramatizations, these caricatures, these general terrible reenactments of a disorder is helping that narrative at all. Generally, someone who is experiencing, let's say, anxiety, for example, could just look normal. I could be experiencing anxiety right now and you couldn't know. But these TikToks seem to show anxiety or panic or bipolar disorder or BPD or depression as these extremes. And yes, they can be, but not always. As someone who has anxiety attacks, I'm pretty sure I don't always viciously shake and scream and pull my hair out. In fact, I don't ever do that. Maybe I just don't experience anxiety. Now, a common thing on TikTok are POVs. You get a camera out and suddenly you think you're an actor. Wow. And in much of the same way as the over dramatizing let's change up my TikTok lights to represent a colour that I might feel. These actually paint out a picture of what it's like to live in a day to day of having these disorders. The first thing with this is that no experience is the same. I feel like these people have literally just typed up, they've gone onto the, if they're from Britain, they've gone onto the NHS website and they've gone, symptoms of depression. Ah, oh, stay in bed all day. Right, let's go make a two minute TikTok of me in bed pretending to cry. First thing that I've seen wrong with this is POV. Just to prove that all experiences are different. As somebody that never was diagnosed with anxiety, although various therapists have said to me, yeah, you, you experience anxiety. Take that as you will. I've always been so anxious to the point of messing up a test that I over prepare for one, that I'm constantly checking when a test is. I would never forget when a test was because my anxiety would not allow me to. Does that mean that everybody with anxiety would never ever ever forget a test. No, because every person is different and every person is affected differently by a mental health illness, by different feelings, by different emotions, by different experiences. This kind of just generalizes it as, oh, here's an example. That'll do. That sums up the entire experience of anxiety. Let's just pretend to have schizophrenia now. <laughs> Are you for real? Because this person has just taken two of the symptoms of schizophrenia and said this is what it's like to live with it. I don't know, this person might live with schizophrenia, but they've done multiple POVs and somehow I just think at this point it's not because they actually have these mental health disorders, it's that they just want to show off their acting skills which um, aren't that, that great. 
Oh. They do GCSE drama. Right. Now, these are kids usually taking part in these trends. Mental health is not a trend. It's not something that should be used for views and likes and clicks, especially on something like TikTok that is readily used by teenagers and children. But I don't think walking onto camera and going, I'm going to pick what mental health illness I have today and then trying to pretend to have that mental health illness is just is that content? Okay, so what TikTok POV are we going to do today? Oh, pick a mental health disorder. Right, I think I'm going to go for depression. Wait. Nothing's changed? Now, whilst researching for this video, I did find quite a lot of TikToks that were good and that did flag the issues with these things. A lot of them said that we should normalise having bad mental health because, to an extent, everybody probably does experience bad mental health days. Nobody is happy 100% of the time. And yeah, you can go through experiences of feeling depressed. You can go through having experiences with depression without being diagnosed with chronic depression. And although I did make the argument for self-diagnosis, when you're self-diagnosed, diagnosis then goes on to being a spokesperson for it on an app that teenagers use for clout. Where is the line? It's almost become a thing where you're not trendy anymore unless you have a mental health issue. It's not trendy. It's got something to aspire to have. Nobody wants these things. Nobody wants to be around people with these things in reality because these things can ruin lives. They're so much more than a TikTok trend. I don't think that's been said enough. The act of exploiting tragedy for views seems a little bit immoral to me. If it's humorous, I can kind of get with it. I'd do it, we'll do it. I'm not the gatekeeper of what you can and can't do online. However, I do think there needs to be a thought before posting things like this. Especially when it comes to bigger influencers because they have an influence. That is the name, in influ in influencer. And this is not just a thing that's common on TikTok. This is a thing that's been used on YouTube for clout by our favorite American person, Trisha. It's been used to excuse behaviors. It's been used to justify behaviors. It's been used to excuse reasons why you shouldn't criticize people's actions because criticism is somehow becoming bullying in our current climate when it comes to commentary channels which um i hate to break it to you but if you put something online you have the right to be criticized if somebody wanted to criticize this video they have every right to because i'm just sharing my opinions and people can disagree with them. But mental health should not be used as a defense, as a justification, or as a way of gaining clout and attention because it stigmatizes those that actually suffer with these things. When you discuss mental health, you have to be very careful, is what I'm trying to say, because the representation of mental health is quite poor. And like I said, it is often romanticized, it's often glamorized in song lyrics, in TikToks, in YouTube, in film, in TV. There's a fine line. And I hope that I have showed you where I think my line is. Now this is a bit more of a laid back video compared to the other videos I've been putting out here recently, even though it's it's quite a serious topic. But if you did enjoy, I hope you like the video and subscribe if you're new and also put on bell notifications so that you know when I upload. Please follow me on my socials, which are underscore underscore Leo 101 and also my TikTok where I do post about mental health because I am hashtag relatable and no one else is allowed to do it, just me. That, just me. And with that, I'll see you soon.